Hello, I'm James Burgess. I want to talk today about Sabian symbols. Now, this is a niche area within astrology, although it's certainly not necessary for you to understand very much about astrology to do this. There's plenty of information that you can find out about yourself from simply studying the Sabian mysteries. And these um, Sabian symbols are rather strange descriptions of archetypes which can be applied in personality. So um, let's say, just give some examples of them. A Sabian symbol might be a cat arguing with a mouse, or the Pope, or old man trying in vain to reveal the mysteries, or a square with one side brightly lighted. It's, it's quite strange images. And these came, these images were, were visually seen by a clairvoyant woman, Elsie Wheeler, back in 1925. She was asked to go through a rather intense process of discovering 360 of these images, a very large number. It took hours only, not days or weeks, and it was done in one day in um, California. And the initiative behind this was from uh, an astrologer of the day called Mark Edmund Jones, and a, a colleague and friend of his, Dane Rudyard, together worked on interpretation of these images of the clairvoyant, the medium. And these interpretations form the body of work that comprise the Sabian symbols study. Now, what I f find very interesting about these symbols is that you you must develop your intuition in order to understand them. They're, they're simply not available through powers of simple analysis. However, unless you approach them with a certain degree of rational thought, they, they lack interpretation. You can't really give them meaning. So when you find out where your particular Sabian symbols are, you can start to blend the rational and the non-rational aspects of intelligence to interpret them. So, for example, the left brain and the right brain both applied to the job of, of giving meaning to these rather bizarre symbols. And when the left brain and the right brain are both busy at the task, they, they communicate with each other. Right, this is how I see it anyway. And, and, and they, they do that through the, the third eye, the pituitary, the pineal gland in the middle of your head. So, it's a good way to start to exercise the third eye and to try and open up to a higher level of perceptual consciousness so that you can see symbols around you. Symbols are everywhere around us, imagery and uh, words even, and our interpretation of them has to be personal, subjective. There's, there's no choice about that. The way we approach words and symbols is largely given to us by what we have learned previously. However, when we're coming to symbols that simply are beyond explanation, like the Sabian symbols are, we, we have to make a leap of faith. We have to grasp them according to our own personal take on the matter. And it is that grasping, that confidence, that faith in our own ability to interpret life that is, is the real juice in this exercise. So I, I don't really think the Sabian symbols have meaning inherent within them. However, they have the potential for meaning according to our ability to interpret them. And that process is, is gold for us to be trained in the facility of interpreting mysterious symbols. Any of us studying the mysteries have to do that. Tarot cards are an example. Astrology is an example. No two astrologers that I've ever met really agree in detail about the meaning of Aries or Taurus or anything. It, it, it's just a symbol system so that we can trigger our intuition to know what otherwise could not be known. Now, the um, Operation of the Sabian symbols is simple in, in, in one way. That if you go to the website, you can put in your birth data and you'll get a list of Sabian symbols for all of your planets. 
At this point, I would really strongly suggest not including the ascendant or the midheaven, the descendant or the nadir, or the part of fortune or the house cusps, all of these things that change minute by minute until or and unless you're quite convinced that your time of birth is reliable to the minute. However, we can start by just looking at the planets. It's really pretty likely that um, your your sun, Mercury, and the outer the other planets are all good. Even the moon can be very likely to be accurate, even if your time of birth is not known to the minute. So I'm, I'm happy to use all of the planets to start with. Now, of course, later you're, you're going to want to include the ascendant, particularly, and the other angles, which can be done. Um, in fact, the ability of an astrologer to rectify a birth time which is unknown depends upon techniques which are not really very reliable, to be honest. Dowsing depends upon somebody having very high psychic ability, which most of us don't have, to be honest. Or looking at events in your life, like the Saturn transits over the angles are very helpful. There are ways of doing the rectification process, but um, there's nothing quite as good as Sabian symbols. It's fast and easy. And I've done another video on rectification, which you can we can refer to the link within the description. So there's one use of the Sabians to rectify your chart, but I find it's, um, its greatest use is to understand yourself on a very deep and subtle level. The, the two men who did most of the commentary, Jones and Rudyard, took a, a bit of a different approach. Whereas Jones was looking at the specific degrees and that the numerology within the placement of that degree within the circle of 360. Very good work. Rudyard took a slightly different approach and he looked at the progression from first of Aries all the way through to Pisces 360 and explained the story, the developing story of the evolution of consciousness. And um, when I've done my um, commentary on the great work of these two guys, I've, I've added a couple of things which come from my own imagination. Um, I've looked at the reverse process to try and understand if you're looking at any, any particular degree, how do you realize its wisdom? And all of the degrees are applicable to all of us. It's just that our own planets will be much more direct, easily grasped than the other degrees, probably. But you're going to want to look at all of them at some point, I would guess. How do you understand the wisdom of any particular degree? And, and, and this is what I have uh, suggested in my work, specifically the, the bit on my website which says Sabian life journey, that part. Um, I'm looking at each previous degree. So, for example, if I want to understand the meaning of Torah 16, which is mine, how, how do I get to know how to be who I am and, and express Taurus 16? And the answer is, well, you've got to master Taurus 15, the previous degree, to do that. That's how you understand how to master your, uh, your own degrees, by also looking at the previous degree. And I've, I've done quite a lot of work to explain each degree in, in succinct form, a little aphorism, um, which you can have a look at. And that's quite a direct way in. Now, um, you, you can also look at where your, your own sun sign is to get the essence of who you are, or your moon sign to see what would make you feel much more secure and relaxed. You can look at Venus to, to find out what kind of people you like and how, how to be creative. You look at Mars to see how best to thrust into the world. You can look at Jupiter and see where uh, your luck might lie if you learn that skill. So you, you could apply all of your knowledge of astrology to Sabian symbols. And, and that would be very helpful to you as an astrologer if, if that's your reason for coming to this video. But even if you're not an astrologer, you can understand these images, these metaphors, quite deeply in your life. They, they take on a very profound meaning when looked at metaphorically. So have a play with them. Just, just 
you know, they're fun. They're really so quite good fun. And for me, it was necessary to go through complex and long-term process before I actually came to a greater depth of understanding. I first looked at them and I thought, well, these are strange, strangely interesting, quite attractive, but meaningless. <laughs> And then many years later, I came back to them and I thought, oh, okay, now, now I could understand why that might relate to me. Oh, and I could interpret that one a bit differently. And so I, I, I started writing about them because for me, it's easier to learn when I teach, as it were. It's easier for me to understand something when I try and write about it. And when I started to write about it, something flowed within me. I, I, I could write more fluently. Than I could think. <laughs> and so I, I wrote uh, my book, and um, which content is on the website. And um, I, I started to find in mysteries there that I had no idea. And I, I had to study them. I had to study what I had already written in order to get any understanding of, of, of some depth. And as I speak, in the last few days, I've had another breakthrough in understanding by this process of looking at the sequence of the Sabians, but looking backwards, which is different from what Rudyard has put forward. So yeah, I've stumbled across my own way of doing it, and it's, it's, ah, it's deeply rewarding for me. I, I regard this as my most profound life work. So enjoy, please, enjoy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.